Hi everyone. Welcome. We're going to start in a few minutes. Okay. Okay, we're going to start. So, welcome everyone. Um, we are starting the ninth uh, sequence of a series. Uh, where we uh, could live uh, a plugin for the software called Giphy. Um, if you want to have a, a summary of, uh, you know, why do we, I mean, why do we do this plugin? What is it going to, to accomplish? Um, if you want to see the past episodes, uh, all of that is uh, in replay on YouTube. Plus, as I put in the chat, but let me put it again. Plus, I have a shared Google Doc that um, gives plenty of uh, useful resources related to this project. Um, uh, this live takes place every Wednesday for an hour. Uh, it often transforms into an hour and a half, but we really try to stick to an hour if possible. Um, and the, yeah, and and it's live, so I, I, I don't prepare, it's not scripted. Uh, and as you, uh, as you will see, uh, I hit a lot of difficulties. And uh, this, uh, sorry, I have to, yeah. I hit a lot of difficulties and I do my best to overcome them and um, and this is where we are now. So let me switch to a view of NetBeans, which is the coding environment we use. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that is NetBeans. On the left, you see it's just like a file explorer. On the left, you see the subfolders uh, and the files in them, the files where we have uh, our coding lines. And the main screen is the one where uh, we actually write code right there. Um, at the moment, we have four files, uh, one which uh, contains, it's called graph operations, and it contains the uh, functions that, uh, you know, do stuff on the graph that the user has opened in Giphy. Then we have L Explorer top component. A component is basically a, a window in Giphy. So this is the top component, which means this is the window which is open by default when, uh, when the plugin loads. So this is a panel. The window is a panel that appears on the bottom left of the screen of the Giphy user. And in this file, we have um, a lot of code related to, you know, what function should be launched when the user clicks on this or that button of the of the window. Then we have selection change listener, and I'm going to open it just to show you how how empty that is. Let me put it here. So it's a super short, uh, super uh, yeah, brief file at the moment. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, basically just a few lines. And what it does is uh, this method is going to be executed each time the user uh, uh, with the mouse selects a different part of the of the network in Giphy. You know, with the mouse, you can just hover the network. Well, each time a different node is selected, this triggers this function. At the moment, it does nothing. Uh, because that's where we left last week. But today we're going to make it do stuff. And last, let me go back here. The last file we have, we called it top term extractor. Extract, extractor. It's um, a file that contains the code uh, which um, takes, uh, takes the textual attributes of the nodes and uh, Compute the top most frequent words in these textual attributes. So that's where we are. Uh, what we would like to do today is, again, if we go back here, you know, this function is triggered or it's called each time the selection of the nodes on the graph has changed. Uh, we would like this method to compute the uh, top terms from the nodes that are currently selected. That's it. If we can do that today, that would be wonderful. Okay, so as you, as you, as you guess, we have a couple of difficulties. The first one is how do we how do we retrieve the nodes being currently selected? As I said, this function is going to be triggered each time uh, the, the user is moving the mouse and is changing the nodes being currently selected. But if you see these lines of code, there is no way we can really, uh, you know, uh, um, put our hand on the graph and do something with the graph. Uh, so try, I'm just trying to remember things. I think we should go back to uh, the code in the top component. So as I say, this is the code that uh, is really uh, related to the, uh, to the main window of the, of the plugin. And last week we have added this, 
took us a lot of time. It took us mo more than an hour, but in the end, we we got these two lines there. So what they what do they do? Um, the first one is uh, just instantiated, which means you know execute um, creating one copy of the class I just showed here, you know, of this file. So just to repeat, this line is just creating one instance of the file I just showed. And this second line takes, you know, the selection change listener that we have instantiated and it adds it to the selection manager. If you look at the, this long line, it, it says vis, visualization control, get instance, get selection manager, so the thing that manages selections, and then add change listener, and this method takes as a parameter the file we have, the class we have just instantiated. And it took us a long time to understand how to do that uh, last week. So let me just add a comment explaining what this thing does. Instanti inst instantiating, which means creating a copy, a uh, single exemplar. I instantiating the change listener and adding it to the listeners, listeners of the selection manager. Uh, from last time, I also remember, and and I'm going to switch to the resources, the you know the Google Doc where I have the resources, where I list the resources for this session. I remember from last time that I had found in the code of Giphy, uh, you know, uh, an example of how se selections were used. And I just, last time I just uh, thought uh, I should really keep, uh, you know, I should bookmark this page of code because it's going to be useful. So I'm going to open it now. So it's pretty, uh, pretty complex. I'm not saying we're going to look at everything, but it had some good example of how do you retrieve the nodes and edges that are being currently selected? So where was, where was it? So first we can, we can, this thing is very simple. This is how you um, get hold of the selection manager. So to come back to my question, let's go back to NetBeans. So you see my simple problem. I can get the selection manager here. Just do, you know, I just do that. And I, I assign the value to a new variable called selection manager. Okay. And that's useful because then I think, oh, I think I have an idea. I, I will see, we'll see. Uh, then I think that when you have the selection manager, when you look at the list of the methods that you can apply to it, let me put it in. When you look at the methods, yeah, you see, you can get selected edges and get selected nodes. This is what we need. Okay, uh, and because why, why? Because actually if we have the selected nodes, we can then compute the, uh, the most frequent terms of the selected nodes, not of the whole entire nodes of the network, but just the ones 
uh, that are being currently selected. And that's it. We, if we can do that, we, I mean, we, we have a super great feature, uh, which is the core of this plugin, showing the top words of the nodes being currently selected. So we're almost there. The question is, as you, I'm just cutting this code. The question is, how do I do that from the change listener? So I should, uh, I'm going to take notes, basically. I'm going to leave the code. Well, I'm going to, I don't, I want to, I'm just going to create a, an empty text file where I can take notes. So I'm creating an empty file, which I'm going to call notes.txt. Uh, it's pretty unusual. I would say that you would do that in a, in a project. Uh, so just to show you where, you know, I just created a notes.txt file, which is an empty file, because I just want to summarize my thoughts. So what I have in mind is that we cannot compute the most frequent terms each time the user is dragging their mouse because it's going to be computationally super intensive and wasteful. What we should do instead is tokenize so yeah, but can I? Yeah, I can uh, make the text bigger. Super happy with that. Oh, brilliant! You see things. So let me write that. If you have any question or remark on the chat, please contribute at the initialization. Uh, so at the initialization phase of the plugin. All, all um, are, so you know, when I think of it, it's not at the initialization phase of the plugin because the user has to tell us which attribute they would like to do the analysis on. So it's not at the initialization phase, it's when the user selects the attribute they want to analyze. You know, we have from the last time, you, you know, we have a drop down menu that the user can, uh, you know, they can point to which attribute they want to analyze. So when the user does that, uh, it should, yeah, it should uh, do the following. The tokenizer should run on the, on the values of this attribute of, on the textual values of this attribute for each node. Uh, okay, the tokens, so the tokens, words, right? The tokens are gonna be words, but I say token because it can include uh, punctuation signs, emojis. So uh, the, that's why I say token. The tokens should be stored and this is where, yeah. They should be stored in a particular way, right? In a particular way, let's write it. And what I mean by that is that each node should our I mean, list, the list of tokens for each node should be stored 
separately. Okay, and I, I, why, why is it important and why do I take so much time there? Is because when the user is gonna uh, move their mouse, let's say that they move from selecting the whole network to just half of it. Uh, at the moment, the code we have is computing the top words for the entire graph. And if we want that the calculation is run again just for half of the graph, we cannot, half of the nodes of the graph, we cannot ask the plugin to re-tokenize all the attributes, uh, all the values of the attribute for every node, and then recomputing which of these tokens are the most uh, frequent. Because if we do that, we do tokenization over, we do tokenization too many times. We need to do it just once. And then we compute the most frequent terms only for the nodes being currently selected. So, okay, I see what, what we need. So we need a map in, uh, it's called a map in, uh, in Java. I, I think it's called a dictionary in Python. So we need a map. So the list of tokens where it should be stored, should be stored separately in a map. A map is something super simple where you associate something to something. That's why you have two stuff in a map. You have the key and the value. So here we need the key should be the node and the value should be the list of, the list or the set, but the list of tokens for this node. So that when the selection moves, so that when the selection changes, we retrieve from the selection manager the list of the nodes being currently selected. And that's exactly the, the lines of code we have just seen before. Uh, with this list, we query the map, the one, the map I've just shown above, and retrieve the list of the lists of tokens for all the selected nodes. So I hope you see what I mean is that at this stage, we're gonna get all the nodes being currently selected. And again, from the selection manager, I just did it with you uh, five minutes ago. It seems like it's a very simple line, like get selected nodes. Once we have the list of these nodes, if we have created this map beforehand, we simply need to say, retrieve the list of tokens for each of the nodes that we just uh, retrieved, which is the, uh, the selected nodes. And what do we do with these tokens? We simply, we rank, or not the term is, we sort these tokens uh, from the most frequent to the least frequent and, and uh, pick the, the 10 or that's the user who chooses, like, is it 10, is it three? And pick the 10 most frequent terms. And of course, and we show these terms in the plugin. That's, I mean, that's it. That's almost it. 
because now if we think ahead of the difficulties we can have, and I, I discussed that several times in the very briefly in the past episodes because we were not there yet, but now we are there. Imagine a user, anyone, will just move their mouse quickly, right? And if you move your mouse quickly, you know, this phrase, when the selection changes, and the, the phrase that says, when the selection, selection changes, all of that should happen. Well, if you trigger all these four you know, uh, lines every millisecond, because the user keeps moving their mouse, the computer will just uh, hang. You know, it's going to be too, too much, too many operations. So what I think is that what we should have is a kind of uh, condition or rule that checks that these things happen for sure, but not more often than 10 times per second, which is already super fast, right? So we're going to start, by the way, in the maybe 10 times per second, just maybe. We're going to start with once per second. It's going to be super smooth. And then we're gonna increase the the frequency that of refresh, but once. So we should say when the selection changes, and that's the condition. And if the last refresh happened more than a second ago, then do all, all that else do nothing so you see it it, start, it starts looking like a, a conditional statement okay i suppose you know that's that's uh, i'm not even sure i'm sure we're not going to do all of that today uh just based on how slowly we progress uh we progressed last times but I'm super happy that at least in writing, we have uh, laid out our plans so that next time we can pick up where we left. Uh, anyway, we're going to start. So what did I say? The tokenizer should run on text texture values of when the user selects the attribute they want to analyze, the tokenizer should run. OK, so do we do that at the moment? I'm shifting now to the place where the tokenizer runs, and I'm going to make sure that it runs when the user selects the attribute. So I'm in the file for the top component. So this is the code that loads the names of the attributes in the drop-down menu. Fine. This is the button that, I mean, that's the action which is performed when the run button is clicked. Oh, and I'm afraid that, yeah. I'm afraid that when you click on run, so we don't want a run button, right? We want the thing to happen automatically. So maybe it's okay. Maybe the user will click on run and it's gonna, uh, it's gonna launch the tokenization. And it's going to show the results for the full graph. So as it does now. Uh, so we're fine. The only issue we have is that if we look back at our plans here, so basically that is 
being done at the moment. It's not when the user selects the attribute, it's when the user clicks on the run button, but this thing happens. But the tokens are not stored at the moment in the way I just described. So we should do that. Okay, well, Clément, let's do that. So this is where, oops, let me show you the file where the extraction happens. So that's this one. Blah, 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 mine and sort textual attributes. That's where the action happens. You know, this way from the past episodes from November or December, not a lot of lines of code as you see. Pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, it's really simple. It's called text fragments. Text fragments, where is that? Okay, text fragments. Text fragments is the, so it's a, ah yes, it's a multiset. It's, it's a multiset is a, a data structure where you can store data, but you don't have a map as I, you know, it's not a map as I just described. So we should have, should we have both? No, I, I, if we want to be clean, we should have one single way. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need, I don't know, I, I'm not sure, but I think what could be interesting, I'm not sure this is super clean and orthodox in terms of coding practice, but we could have a class that just holds the data, not super clean, but I don't care. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, the plugin is, it's not like some, let's see, let's do it and we'll see if, if that was a bad idea. So I would like to create a class which is in charge of holding the data and making it available to the rest of the plugin. Why not? So we're going to call it data provider. No, that's data manager. Yeah. That's nice, data manager. And you know, it's something super, so it's being created, it's there. So just to show, you know, data manager now has been added as a file there. And this is the content that you see of the data manager, which is empty. So a data manager is gonna contain data structures and a map, as I said. So it's gonna be a public, uh, let's make it public. Oh, let's not make it public. How could I? Okay, let's make it private. Private, private means that only this class can, can access this data structure. It's not necessary, but it's a habit. Uh, so the map is gonna ma map, this map is gonna map a node ID, you know, an ID, each node has, has an ID. So I think in terms of memory, it's much uh, less, it takes less memory space to store a node through their ID than the full node. So that's why, and the ID is a string, so that's why. Uh, and then a list of tokens, right? And list of text fragment. So I call text fragments, these tokens actually. And what is this object? What's the name of the variable? Map of node IDs to their text fragments. I know it's ridiculous to have such a long name for a variable, 
but it's so practical actually to when you see the variable you know you just understand what it is what it does so we instantiate this Static means, static as a keyword in Java means that you can, uh, I mean, this thing can be, this variable can be, can be instantiated and used without the need to instantiate the class it is in. So it's, it, sounds, it sounds complicated what I'm saying, but it's pretty uh, straightforward actually. Uh, so we're gonna have methods to access this variable. So a getter, a method to get this map, and a method, a method to to uh, set this uh, field or attribute. Okay. So now if we back to our top term extractor, instead of creating a multi-set of, or it can be a multi-set, but the multi-set is basically just, we should use the multi-set only for the computation of the top terms, but we should not use it to store the text fragments. Why exactly? Because what I've written in the notes, because basically the, the, the tokens or the text fragments we're gonna compute are, are always going to change. They will vary depending on the nodes being selected. So we need to store them in a map and then we transfer them into a multiset only for the nodes that are being selected. So we can't have just a multiset. We need a map for the permanent storage of all tokens or text fragments and we need a multi-set where we transfer the tokens only from the nodes being currently selected. So that's why we need these two things. So back to the top term extractor. Uh, Basically, I should not do that. I should not, once the token, once the text fragment or the token has been identified, it should be added to... Oh yeah, but I see the problem I have here. I don't even have, I have lost track of the node. So I should have you know, because as you see, I first take the text and then I extract the tokens. But at, at the moment when I extract the tokens from the text, I don't know to which nodes they, they, they correspond to. So I should always keep track of which, to which node this token relates to. So to do that, I should not use a list of string, I should use a map. I should again map the textual, uh, the texts of each node to the node. 
but it should be okay. I don't have much to change, I suppose. Okay. Uh, get ID, the ID, where is the ID? So the ID is an object actually, not always a string. So I should convert it to a string. Ooh. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, no, no, it's not. Okay, so what we have is that the map is made of a key, which is the node ID, and the value, which is the textual attribute of this node. That's super simple, actually. That's just that. So text from the attributes, we have it here, and then we can loop, uh, we can iterate on it. Uh, how do I iterate on a, on a map? Uh, not that difficult. Do you see it here? No, no, you don't. So, iterate, uh, entry set, iterator. So I'm iterating on all the nodes and their corresponding textual attribute, iterator on nodes and their textual attribute. There's a very nice shortcut in NetBeans, which I'm using now. which basically writes, so for each, for each next entry in the map, retrieve this next entry, and then, it's not, it's not description by the way, string textual attribute, the textual attribute is the value of this entry, while the node ID is the key to this entry. And what do we tokenize? We tokenize the textual attribute. And if the text attribute is not a white space, not a punctuation sign, and whatever, and whatever, and whatever, we add it to to the we add it to the data managers. We add it there. I'm always. A, So it's pretty ugly, but I never know if I can. Well, let's try it, we'll see. Uh, not here, maybe here. So we retrieve the map that matches a node ID to the list of text fragments. And when we have a text fragment, so if this map already contains the node,
if it contains the node ID. Then we retrieve the tokens that go with it. We retrieve the tokens. Oops, you don't see. Hopla. And we add the current fragment just a list of strings so let's replace that here why does it complain it should not of strings and then completely wrong here it's not a, it's not idea that should go there okay so if the map of node ids to their text fragments already contain the node id then just add the text fragment to the current list of text fragments and insert it back to the map but otherwise just create a new list just create a new list new empty list uh, not empty but, uh, yeah and add Add the current text fragment to it. And put that here. We can remove that. Yeah. Oops. So why does it complain? No, it doesn't. Okay. And then, yes, and then we need a separate method. And this method should not be here because, because we're going to call it in many different places. So, okay, I understand it was not super clear. Let me recap. And back to the notes. Basically, what I just did is that we want to decouple the storage of the tokens for the whole for all the nodes of the network. So that should be that should be made just once. You know, the tokenization of all the. Uh, textual attributes of all the nodes, it should happen once. And that's what I have done there. We should decouple that, which, happened one, which happens once. 
from this part, which will happen every time a user will update the selection of the nodes. Meaning, among the tokens that we have for all the nodes, which tokens correspond to the nodes being currently selected. So as you see, these two operations should not be entangled because we want that the first part of the operations happens just once and that the second part can be called and executed independently from the first. Uh, so where were we? We're here. So this highlighted in blue, this is the part of the code that stores in one place the data manager, as I have called it. This part of the code tokenizes all the nodes, you know, the textual attributes of all the nodes, and it stores it in a map in the data manager. And the map is just a list of node IDs and for each of these node IDs there is a list of the text fragments for this for each of these nodes that's it the second part we should really remove it and put it elsewhere because this second part is about selecting the nodes being current uh, you know, selecting the nodes being currently selected. Uh, no. Uh, how, um, yeah. Um, uh, let me, that's a long sentence, but this part of the code should retrieve the text fragments only from the nodes being currently selected. So it should be a method where as an input we have a list of node IDs, you know, the ones being currently selected, and as an output, it delivers a list of top words. Yes, brilliant, that's exactly that. So I'm gonna just do a big and ugly uh, co uh, cut. I cut all of that, and I, well, I'm gonna stay in this class I'm just going to do another method. So private, it should re string is going to return a string. Um, top terms extractor from selected nodes. So that's the big difference. It's not just in general, it's just from selected nodes. As a, oops, you don't say it. As a, as a parameter, it takes a list of IDs of nodes, so a list of strings, node IDs, and then the method starts. You know, that's well, you don't see much. Yeah, that's better, I think. Well, slightly better. And this is where I paste the code I've just cut it above. I don't need this console statement anymore. Uh, what was this thing doing? I can't even remember. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's not relevant exactly anymore. Now what we need to do is retrieve from the data manager the tokens corresponding to the nodes we have selected. Uh, okay, how do we do that? Data manager. We get the full map. So now this is where we should be super good and I'm not super good. You know, how do we computationally effectively 
retrieve the tokens only from the nodes we selected. I think there is no, no, there is no, I mean, nothing really faster than what I'm gonna do. So for each node ID from the list of node IDs that we take as an input, we're gonna, yeah. Oh, by the way, we should have a set, a multi-set somewhere. Because this is where the multi-set is useful, yeah. So the multi-set that we had from above, we need it here, actually. So, yeah, that's going to be pretty efficient computationally, I think. So we're going to retrieve from the map Why object? It's a string. Why does it? Well, we'll see. Oh, it's fine. So these are the text fragments for the selected node. And we add it to this. So we're going to re Oops, we're gonna rename it this thing. It's not text, it's not text fragment in general, it's, it's all text fragments from all selected nodes. That's really ugly. But you know at least there is no confusion. <laughs> so in this multiset, which is empty at the moment, we're gonna add all these strings. Yeah, that's it. Actually, that's super simple. That should be super fast. And then the rest works. Once we have all the terms and the accounts in a multiset, we can sort the terms from the most to the least frequent. Perfect. I expect it to be pretty fast as well. And then the string builder turns it into turns it into, uh, you know, some text that we can display on a label. Uh, something is missing, the max number of terms. So we should have it as a parameter here. So, and look at that, this method, we can simply call it here. That's how brilliant this is. What was the, yeah. So we call it here. It returns a string, right? Oh, oh there is an issue here. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, no big issue, I'm just making a mistake. Uh, it should be called this with the, with the, with the list of node IDs. But in, in practice, we want all the nodes, you know, for this first iteration. Uh, okay, so we should list them. Uh, here, listing all node IDs because this for this first run of the plugin, we want to show the top terms of the entire network, so all the nodes. So we just need a list of their IDs. all node IDs and so each time we iterate through a node we add the node ID oops 
Oops, 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 oops. Making some uh, mistake. Typing mistake here. Get ID, get ID. Okay, in this way we have a list with all node IDs and that's what we can pass here. It returns a string and the result is top terms for the entire network. And that's what we return. But I hope you, so you're like, yeah, that's exactly, you know, there's nothing much that has changed. The, the big and important thing we have done is that we have isolated this, oops, what did I do? We have isolated this function here. Let me highlight it for you. We have highlighted this function, which runs the first time on the whole network when the user clicks on run. But, and please, please follow here, this method, we're gonna be able to call it from the, uh, you know, the change listener, the, the thing that gets triggered each time the selection moves, we're gonna be able to call this function and again, to repeat, as, a, as an input, it takes two parameters, a list of node IDs, and as you guess, we're gonna pass as a parameter the list of current, currently selected node IDs, not the entire network, plus a ma maximum number of terms, which is the parameter that the user has selected uh, uh, on the, you know, with, with a slider in the plugin. So I, I would be, and where is this method going to be called? Well, maybe somewhere here, you know, the change listener, the thing that gets triggered. So again, just from last week, that's what we had achieved. This line is executed each time the selection changes. So even if I'm not gonna do it today, I've checked the time and it's 4 p.m. But basically what we would like to have is you know, something a bit like this method. You know, we, we, we don't care about this hello world. This method being called there. And so at the moment, I don't know how you, you can call it from here. Ah, should I make it a static method? I will see that next time, but you see that the, the, the kind of uh, refactoring we have done today allows us in a clean way to separate the tokenization phase, uh, which happens just once when the user clicks on run. The result of this tokenization phase is a map which is stored in a class we have created and pompously called data manager. And the results of this class, you know, this map stored in this class can be accessed later to compute the most frequent terms only for the selected nodes. Before all the work we did today, we couldn't have done it. So there is a bit of a cliffhanger now, uh, you know, uh, because we are nearly there. Uh, but next time we we're gonna continue this work and what we want to, as a result is, we want to see the result on the plugin. I can't wait for the moment where I'm gonna just move my mouse and and the, the plugin is gonna refresh, refresh and just show me at the, the top terms of the, uh, of the region where my mouse is currently selecting nodes. Okay, we are super on time. We had, we encountered no issue, which is a, quite a surprise and a, a very good surprise. So I'm leaving there. Uh, thanks for following. 
and uh, all your questions are welcome as usual. Uh, I'm more than happy to uh, answer your questions and also to listen to your uh, uh, suggestions for features and, and remarks. So have a good day and see you next week, hopefully.